Hello, my name is Mark Pereira and I'm the director of the Norna Society. I'm here today to talk to you about the Asatru Edda. This is a work that we put out a few years back and we're here today to talk about the Asatru Edda and what it means to us and what we've done with it and what we're going to be doing with it in the future. Uh, there seems, there's been a lot of confusion surrounding it on what exactly the book is and we want to get help people to understand it a little bit better, clarify it, understand what the book represents, what it means, uh, the history behind it, all the work we put into it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, the, the first thing we have to understand is how all of this work began. When I was uh, studying this stuff and, and, and the people that I work with and the ideas and concepts that developed, uh, it was basically, you know, uh, being a member of the Odinist community, the Ostru community, uh, reading magazines and different uh, newsletters and all kinds of publications where people would be talking about our lore and how the lore was so fragmented and Christian tainted and how we would never be able to have any kind of concise and uh, you know, system of sacred lore for ourselves that was made for heathens and by heathens and how we can have our own stories brought back to us for our movement. And that really discouraged me. I really thought that that was something that, you know, was really, uh, you know, that, that we should be able to figure out a way to make this, you know, come back to life. That we should be able to bring back these traditions in some way or another. Now, I never sought uh, to be an authority. I never sought to, to try to make people believe the way I believe or make the lore some sort of uh, authoritative text that dictates how people live their lives. All I was trying to do was seek, see if there was a way that we could rebuild these traditions and give ourselves something that we lost and take it take it back take back our legacy and you know the Christians took this from us you know centuries ago and we had to rebuild it and understand it and so you know the, I didn't have any way of doing this at the time when I first you know came to this revelation and and had this desire until a few years later when I came across the works of Dr. Victor Rydberg and he was basically the inspiration for all of the work that I've done. And this is how or why we established the Norn Society because the first works, uh, you know, the first volume of Rydberg's Investigations in Germanic Mythology was published by the original Norn Society. And this is why we did this. This is why all of our work has, has culminated and developed based on honoring those uh, Rossmann Sanderson and who translated Rydberg's works into English and Rydberg himself. You know, so we the, the work continued and it built and we had all of these different um, notes and books and, and we had to do translations we had to understand and this took a period of t over 12 years and, you know the the main thing that we had to do was understand how to keep the lore as pure as possible and this was a difficult task this is something that we had to work very very diligently on and it, you know and we still weren't able to keep it as you know retain the original act, you know, sources completely 100%, but we did it the best that we could. And that's what people need to understand is that the Asatru Edda uh, is not just another mythology book. It's not just a story book. These are the original sources. You'll find every single lay in here that, uh, that is significant to the heathen lore, that's not overtly Christianized, that's not corrupted, you know, and some of, some of them are, frag, you know, pushed into a way that fits the epic order. Some of them are put in, you know, different uh, places. And the, all that we did was basically develop a chronology based on Rydberg's theories and his ideas. We developed a chronology that allowed us to put the sources together. I mean, if, if, if I open the book up here uh, to any page, you can see here uh, in this chapter, which is 44, uh, you're talking about the Grotty Mill, these uh, strophes right here, and they're cited in the end notes. This is from the, uh, the, the poem of Grotty, the, the, the Grotty Psalm, which is what it is called. And so we put these pieces together, we developed all of these ideas, and we made sure that the sources remained in there. The Havamal's in there, the Sudrifamal's in there, the Bulispa's in there. All of these sources were pieced together so that we could create something for us, for my family, and for people who wanted to surround themselves by this, so that we could have a sacred text. We could have something that we could read to our children, something that we could pass down as something that was important to us. 
And a lot of people are mis under, under the misconception in our community that our faith shouldn't have a sacred text. That <clears throat> we should have, you know, our stories are passed down in, in oral tradition and, and all that stuff. But you have to understand that uh, as, as an Indo-European religion, our people, our ancestors created the first sacred text, which was the Vedas. You know, these, these were before the Bible, before the Quran, before all of the sacred texts that are, are popular today. You know, the Vedas were the very first, and they predated the Bible by over a century. And so our ancestors understood and knew the concept of a sacred text and wanted to have a sacred text within their, their religious structure. And so what we have done is we have taken the sacred lore, the, the, the lore that our ancestors passed down, that we have ourselves, and we pieced it together in a chronological epic order. And that's pretty much all, we've, all that we've done. I mean, we had to fill in some blanks here. Most of the work that we did, because uh, Rydberg was one who, who began this, a, a lot of the blanks are filled in with his uh, God Saga and a lot of the theories that he did. Um, there's a few places here and there where we had to add some stuff to it, you know, just to fill in the gaps. But everything we did was to focus and maintain the lore for what it is, to keep the lore as intact as possible so that we could have a sacred text for our community. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's about a scholarly work that was written by Odinists or Ossetruer for us, for our movement, for our community. And that's what we're, we're really working on to try to develop in the future. We have more, um, more ideas for this. This, this, this specific volume right here, this is going to be volume one and we're working on, or it's a first edition, we're going to be working on a second edition and we're going to uh, put out the Odinus data, which is going to be an anglicized version of this. We're going to take out a lot of the Old Norse words. A lot of people had a lot of problems with that, which is understandable. So we're getting rid of a lot of that. We're changing a lot of things around. And eventually we would like to have a book similar to this. Now this is a work that we put together for ourselves. This is a handwritten text, handwritten version. We put it on parchment paper. We have uh, rune prints in here. You can see some of the rune prints there that I drew and we put those in there. So we're hoping to have something like that so people can have like, you know, so, so that we can have, you know, this for us is an heirloom. This is something that we'll pass down to our kids. And so we want to have something that people can have in that sense, to something that's important, something that has that link to the past in the present and can be handed down to the future. And that's a very important thing for the Norn Society, which is why our motto is hearts in the past, minds on the present, eyes on the future. This is something that is, is for us. We're trying to build this legacy for our descendants. And so we're going to keep working on this. We're going to keep building these works and trying to, to improve their, their uh, presentation and help people to better understand them and develop ideas behind them. And so, you know, people can take and, and even develop other edits for themselves. People can understand that, you know, we, like I said, we're not trying to be an authority here. We're not trying to tell people, that, you know, this is the way, this is the, the Bible, this is our dogma or anything like that. We're just trying to say that, you know, here's our reconstructed sacred lore traditions. You know, and it's a, it's a, it, for some people, you know, take it or leave it. You can uh, add to it, do what you want to it, you know, uh, for, for yourself and develop your own edits, which is fine, you know, because we're, what we're trying to do is something for us and our, and our society and our movement and our community and, and try to help and give back to people. And that's, that's our main goal here. Now, uh, you know, people, to understand that you know you can order this book uh, on Amazon. You can order it on uh, Barnes and Noble. Um, you can order it uh, through bookstores using the ISBN number. Uh, it's now an ebook. You can get on your Nook or your Kindle. Um, it's all it's available through a lot of different sources. And we tried really really hard to get the price as low as possible in book form. And we had a little bit of wrestling with our publisher to do that. Uh, the book ended up being a little bit more pricey than we wanted. But you know we, we were able to uh, you know get it. We were really happy when it got on the ebooks and was able to be out there a little cheaper. Because our our main goal is not to make money or be have any kind of glory behind this. You know our main goal is to get the information out there. Is to help people. Is to help our movement grow and our faith grow. And that's what our our, our whole our entire goal is. 
and we want to thank everyone out there, every single person out there who's giving us support, who's shown us, you know, likes on Facebook, who's been behind us, because this, this book and The Nature of Asa True, the other books that we're working on, the support that we've been given by our faith community has been, just been overwhelming, and we're so happy and so blessed to have this, and we're so grateful for you all. Thank you and good night.